So your wedding day is coming up, which is supposed to be very exciting. But unfortunately, you find yourself riddled with anxiety for what this day is going to look like, and you don't know how to tackle that anxiety. Maybe anxiety is something you deal with all the time, or maybe this is simply event specific just for your wedding day, but you're starting to feel the panic creep up a little bit. And after eight years of wedding planning, I have seen this time and time again. So in today's video, we're going to discuss how to prevent as best as possible wedding day anxiety. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Jamie Wolfer. I'm your online wedding planner. I'm here to help you figure out how to plan your wedding easily and stress less because you deserve a stress-free wedding day. You are entering into a phase of your life where you don't know what you're doing. And that can make even a person who doesn't deal with anxiety feel extremely overwhelmed very quickly. <laughs> like in a very short time frame, it kind of just feels like it all starts to get away from us. So in today's video, we're going to talk about six ways that you can prevent wedding day anxiety. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Number one, we got to figure out what is causing this. Now there's a lot of reasons why you might be feeling anxiety on your wedding day. And while I'm not a therapist, I've seen this a time or two, so maybe I might be able to help you unpack a few of these things. What's the root cause? Where is all this coming from? Because if we kind of don't get down to that, then we're going to keep feeling these either low levels or high levels of anxiety that end up spiking off of seemingly harmless things or activities or expenses. So let's talk about the root cause first. Maybe it's the people. Maybe there's too many people. Maybe you have anxiety uh, being in crowds. And even if it's a crowd of your favorite humans in the world, it's still too many. It's still a lot. Maybe you're introverted and you don't want to be put on pedestal or put on display. Maybe you're stressing out that something's going to go wrong. Maybe you're stressing out that things are going to be out of your control when it comes to your wedding day. When things get kicked off, you're like, I, it's out of my hands because I'll be standing at the altar so I can't control anything, right? Like, I, I, what am I going to do? Or in addition to that, if something goes wrong, what if I'm not prepared? What if I don't know what to do? What if things run late? How do you recover from that? What if you have angry guests? What if you have bored guests? What if you have hungry guests? Maybe you're worried about one specific guest in particular, or perhaps there's some poor relationships that you're concerned that will affect your wedding day. Maybe there's a concern with a vendor that you've been working with and you're starting to see some yellow, if not orange, bordering on red flags and you don't know how to handle this. Maybe you're just worried that you're going to forget something and it's going to crumble like a house of cards. Or maybe you didn't have any of those fears and now that you watch this, you're like, thanks, Jamie, I feel so much better. Very much. Or you came into this going, well, I had one of those, but now I have all of them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was not my intent. But we got to figure out where this root cause is, right? Is it the opinion of other people? Is it a strained relationship? Is it having too many people? Is it your guests not being entertained or your guests not enjoying themselves? Those are core fears that people have surrounding their wedding day, and they're perfectly normal. They're also almost entirely preventable. So once we find the root cause, we can then take better steps to attacking that problem before it even happens. I'm going to rip off the band-aid with this next tip. If there is a specific person or a group of people and you're feeling some tension and you know you either should invite them or you've been told to invite them or you have invited them but you're uncomfortable, if there is any sort of relational tension with someone you're inviting, the best way to combat that is to talk to them beforehand. What many people do, what many of us do when it comes to situations like this is we're just, we just are going to avoid it and hope that they're on their best behavior on your wedding day, right? Like just, I'm just going to hope and pray. I'm going to send them an invitation and I'm going to hope they don't come talk to me or I'm going to hope they don't drink too much or I'm going to hope they don't cause drama with my mom because they're not talking to each other or I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope. But instead, if we can be proactive about this and go to that person and go, let's say it's your aunt and your mother on, on good speaking terms, go to your aunt and say, hey, this is my wedding day. This is not the place to air this dirty laundry. If you can't be near my mom um, and keep things copacetic, then unfortunately, I think we're going to have to have you not come um, because it's more important to me that people are enjoying my wedding day than it is to have to work through this emotional management and have the same conversation with your mom. Hey, it's my wedding day. I'm pumped about it. I'm excited. Uh, I'm aware that this relationship is tense. Um, Keep it cool, you know, like let's not ruffle any feathers and let's get through the evening um, and let's hope that we can all enjoy ourselves. If this relationship is so strained, maybe it's not your mom and your aunt, maybe it's you and someone else, you might need to consider not inviting or having someone who's aware of the situation be able to step in and help you out just so you're prepared. So we've now done our best to remove any sort of potential blow up that could happen on the wedding day. If that's the fear, right? That's the fear. We don't have the blow up. Let's talk about it beforehand. Don't ignore it. Don't hope. Have a conversation. If it's someone that might imbibe too much, you can either have a direct conversation with them, a conversation with your bartender, or don't invite them. If it's someone that will cause too much drama, again, direct conversation with them, have a body buffer that can get step in and handle this person if they get to be too much, or don't invite them. 
three simple steps. Have a professional or a friend intervene or don't extend it an invitation at all. If the issue uh, is not with a family member or friend or relations between other people, but maybe it's between you and a vendor, maybe you, the chef and the catering staff is a lot more intense than you anticipated and you're not really enjoying your interactions with him. Or maybe uh, your DJ is kind of coming across as rude and not really listening to you. Whatever sort of strain you have between yourself and a vendor, I highly recommend, again, airing that out beforehand. Um, if, that, if that means you go as far to say, hey, DJ Scrubs, whatever his name is, uh, I'm sensing some tension uh, around the subject or around this regarding our wedding day. It appears that you might be frustrated with our decision or our line of thinking. Can you clarify that? Because I'd love to go into our wedding day and make sure that, you know, um, you're not frustrated with our choices and we are satisfied with the service that we're going to be getting. Just want to clear the air on that and take it from a very tactful, but also a very practical approach. If it's not with specific people, but it's more the amount of people, it is time to trim your guest list. If you are an introvert, and this is not your thing, do not invite 150 people. You do not need to put yourself through that. That is simply setting yourself up for wedding day anxiety if you don't like crowds and you're setting up a wedding day with a crowd. We run into situ situations before where like the, uh, the bride likes a lot of people and the groom doesn't. And the groom's like, okay, I'm gonna say yes to a large wedding because you like big events and I don't, but I can muscle through it. This needs to be a conversation that you have with your fiance. You know, if you are the person that's the, I don't like people and they're the person that's like, I like people and I want it to be big. This is where compromise comes in. Your wedding day and planning this is literally just like a, a roadmap for how your marriage is gonna go. <laughs> Let me tell you, having been married for as long as I have, the things that we discussed and how we reached compromises during wedding planning um, was pretty indicative of how we'd handle stressors moving forward, how we'd handle big financial situations or uh, relationship issues. Who should we invite? Who should we not invite? Is that worth our money? Is it not worth our money? These are conversations we've continued to have throughout our marriage just on different subjects. So if you are the person that doesn't want a bunch of people and your fiance is insisting on it, may, or maybe you've allowed it and you've said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but now you're kind of panicking a little bit. You can still revisit this. You can still come back and have another conversation and say, hey, can we just trim like 50 people, <laughs> please, please? Uh, I'm already kind of panicked about it and um, I just don't think I can do 200 people or 100 people. Can we minimize this? I will be having another video coming out on how to deal with wedding day anxiety on the day of, a very tactical approach of what you need to be doing in that day. So be sure to subscribe, jump down there, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can be notified when that gets uploaded because that's going to help a ton of people navigate the actual wedding day. Right now we're talking about preventing it before we even get there. There also needs to be a tactical approach for day of as well. So keep your eye out for that. And conveniently trimming your guest list will also help to bring that budget down. So maybe finances have been your concern. Of course, that doesn't really affect day of as much. It's not like that day you're gonna be looking around stressing it about all the dollars you spent. <laughs> right? Most people don't. They worry about more like sociological kind of things and less about financial things on the wedding day. But it is convenient that when your guest list is trimmed, it helps to bring those finances down as well. If your concern is that something will go wrong, maybe someone won't show up on time. If your concern is that you'll forget something. If your concern is that the timeline will go off the rails. If your concern is that things will be late. If your concern is for your guests enjoying themselves. If you're stressing out about them being angry or bored or hungry, there is one very clear solution to this. And seriously, if you walk away with nothing else from this video, take this one bit of information and run with it. If you want guests to be enjoying themselves, everyone to know where they should be and when they should be there, and things to run as on time as possible, and to lessen the likelihood of things going wrong, you need a wedding day timeline. I did a video years ago with my dear friend Dave over at Mar Amari Productions where I sent him over timelines and he had to guess whether a professional wrote them uh, or like a couple DIY'd their timeline. And I think he got it right almost every single time. I'll link it right up here if you guys wanna check it out. Uh, it's a very funny video or I'll leave it in the description if you wanna finish this video first and come back to it later. But he was able to accurately point out every single choke point or pain point in the wedding day timeline instantaneously if a couple wrote it, instantaneously if a, not, if a non professional wrote it. We know how a wedding day is supposed to be run. We know the amount of time that it'll take for 150 people to move from one room to the next. We know how long a cocktail hour should be and 
spoiler alert, it's not always an hour. You know how long photography typically takes or when your first look should happen or how to calculate adding in your drive time from your ceremony location to your reception location. We also know the pacing of your reception, you know, when it comes to dinner, when it comes to toasts, when it comes to dances. I cannot impress upon you enough the importance of an effective and well-communicated timeline. And you're like, that's great, Jamie, but you just told me that a DOI timeline is a bad idea and my vendors will know and there will be pain points and choke, I think you said choke points. There, there'll be choke points. Yes. And you also said that this will affect my guests enjoying themselves, being hungry or angry or bored or whatever emotions guests are going to go through at my event. Like that's a new fear unlocked, right? Like I thought everyone would be fine. And how does my timeline affect this? Let's split this up into two groups. Uh, for things going wrong, for people not knowing where they're supposed to be and when they're supposed to be there, that is when an effective timeline being sent out to everyone with those instructions is of the utmost importance. You lessen the likelihood of starting late when your DJ knows the start time, when your wedding party knows the start time, when your family knows the start time, when everyone's aware of what's supposed to be happening and when it's supposed to be happening, we've got more eyeballs aware of this schedule there are more people that will ensure it's happening in a timely manner. If your timeline gets off the rails or something goes out of schedule, you now have a perfect template to refer to to adjust things, to scoot things around. Maybe you can't go straight into first dance like you thought, but you now have the perfect template for how to switch things around. And you've communicated that to people outside of yourself. So if and or when things go wrong, and this goes for even if you're not hiring a coordinator, someone else can refer to this and go, here are the next steps we're gonna take. I see the roadmap, we're gonna have to take a detour, but we can put this here and move this here instead of being like, I don't know how weddings work. If God forbid something does go wrong, and we do see things go wrong at weddings all the time, they could be minor or they could be much larger. But if you do not have a roadmap for what they should be doing, an ideal schedule of what you want out of your day, it will be much more difficult for someone to make a decision on your behalf and navigate around those issues for you. That is the importance of a timeline when it comes to correcting things if they go wrong and preventing them from going wrong in the first place. In addition to that, with your guests, because again, <laughs> y'all are like, Jamie, you said something about the guests being bored. How, what does a timeline have to do with that? A well-paced timeline, which you probably don't know the pacing of it, and you're not supposed to. You've never done this before, okay? This is like, this is what we do. This is why wedding players do what they do, because we know the pacing. We want the guests to be enjoying themselves and like everyone to be chill and, and for it to go from like ceremony to cocktail hour to reception and guests are just like, enjoying it. It's just very seamless. Now what happens with a poor timeline when people don't know when they're supposed to be there or what they're supposed to be doing, maybe the caterer shows up late. Maybe the caterer isn't prepared because it wasn't communicated effectively in a very clear, easy to read manner. Cocktail hours at this time, dinner starts at this time. A chef needs to know that start time to be able to prepare food in a timely manner to get it ready by then, right? So they have to be able to backtrack from service time. Maybe your photographer needs to know all the times that you're gonna be ab available for photos throughout the wedding day. First look, are you doing one of those? Are you going to be doing uh, wedding party photos beforehand or do you have to squeeze them in during cocktail hour? How much time are you allotting for family photos? Do you want to do sunset photos? These are all things that you need to communicate to your photographer that would be on a timeline. So how does that affect the guests? Well, if the chef is late and food's late, then guests start tapping their feet going, <laughs> are we supposed to eat at this thing or what's happening? If no one cues grand entrance, which is what happened at my wedding, we stood there for 20 minutes waiting for someone to announce us, um, which is, you know, a whole story for another time. Uh, I actually kind of hated my wedding um, and I did a whole video on it. I'll leave it down in the description box if you want to watch it later. <laughs> Just <laughs> take notes from me of what not to do, right? Maybe the DJ cues the wrong song or sends you to the wrong thing during the reception. All of that is distracting, right? If your guests are waiting for food or if they're waiting to be dismissed to go on to cocktail hour or if they're waiting for your ceremony to start, if guests sit and wait and things aren't moving along at a decent enough pace, there isn't a timeline telling people when things are supposed to happen and someone effectively moving that along, your guests will notice. In my opinion, the best run wedding days are the days where guests don't look at their watches. You know, where they're never like, man, when is this thing going to start? Or man, when are we going to get some food? Or man, when's the dance floor going to open? I don't want them to have to think about it at all. I want them to show up and not glance at their watches once because they're either watching your ceremony, engaged in great conversation at your cocktail hour, or eating or dancing on the dance floor. And all of that takes strategic timing. Now, <laughs> if you're watching this and you're like, well, I wasn't stressed about it before, but now I am because I didn't realize my guest's happiness at my event hinges on a good timeline. 
You guys, I cannot impress upon you enough because of what I've seen in literally almost a decade of doing this. Wow, <laughs> that's insane to say out loud. Because of what I've seen, I know the importance of a good timeline. This is not something, this is not a gamble you want to take on your wedding day. That is why we created Perfect Wedding Timeline. That is literally the whole purpose of this because you don't know how this is supposed to go and a lot rides on this. Things can go wrong, things can start late, people won't show up where they're supposed to be, and your guests will notice that your timeline is wonky. If you've ever been to a wedding and you're like, wait, now that you're saying that, I do remember being bored at a wedding. Or I do remember sitting there being like, when are they going to serve the food? Like, what is going on? Or, man, this is starting really late. Or, cocktail hour seems to be going on for a long time. If you've ever felt that way, ever been bored or unentertained or had that sensation as a wedding guest, then you probably understand a little bit more of what I'm saying. Those are all issues that can be solved by a well done timeline. And that's what Perfect Wedding Timeline does. It asks you all the questions that a professional would ask you and compiles it into a timeline for you where you can actually put in people's contact information and cell phone numbers and it will text them reminders of when they're supposed to be at locations. It will send out emails. You can have a specific timeline for just your wedding party so they don't have to worry about when the caterer gets there because that doesn't matter to them, right? But they might need to know when the photographer shows up so they can be there to get ready with you or they can be there and put their suits on. Or you can send a specific one just to your family so they know when they need to be there for family photos, your caterer, all the pertinent information for them, your photographer, and send out text updates. Uh, this is this is one that we mainly focus on wedding party and family for, just as a reminder, like, here you go, and here's a link to Google Maps to show you where to go so you can't be late. Thank you. And again, because you probably don't know what a good wedding timeline looks like, this is why this tool is super powerful and it's really cheap. We were told we should probably be charging more, but uh, we're not doing that. <laughs> So if you are interested, I'm gonna go ahead and link it right up here for you to check out. I cannot impress the severity of this onto you enough. It affects so many things. The next tip is gonna sound a little harsh, okay? But someone's gotta say it. Well, you already know this. That's why you're here. That's why you're watching this video, right? Don't act like you know everything. That's not how you're acting, but you have to remind yourself. I don't know the answer to this. I don't know how to do this. There's a reason that like wedding planners exist as an entire profession, okay? There's a reason that I've been doing these videos for five and a half years and I'm still coming up with new content because I know so much information about this industry and how wedding days run that like I can keep creating content. Like we're just, we're still, I don't know how we're still going to be totally honest, but we are. Like we're still cranking out information of things that you haven't learned yet and things that you don't know. And you don't have all the time in the world to scan through all of my videos to figure out the answers to this, right? I mean, that's a lot of content. That's a lot of my face. Your fiance would probably like hate me <laughs> if you tried to do that. You don't know what you don't know but you do know that you can take strategic steps to make sure you are covered. You need guidance. This is your hero story, right? Like this is your love story. It's arguably one of the biggest days of your life and you just need a guide to come alongside you to make sure you are implementing things as best as possible. Consider me the Dumbledore to your Harry Potter, okay? Like I am here to guide you along your way. Now, of course, you can go to different resources for this, but you're here. So I'm gonna tell you of all the options that we have for you. Now we've got plenty of free options um, or very low cost options to support you along the way. One of them obviously are these videos. There's tons of content, again, five and a half years of stuff that you can go through and kind of piecemeal this together of course, it's not in chronological order because that would be really hard to do over years, <laughs> right? But you could probably, especially if you go onto a desktop and go to my direct channel, there's going to be a search bar on the upper right hand corner. You can click that and type in what you're looking for, right? And if there's a video that exists with that in the title, it will pop up for you. I also have this epic, and I do mean epic email list where we've taken all these videos and compiled them into chronological order. So I will send you what you need to be watching when you need to be watching it. And all of it is based off of this checklist right here, which is the ultimate wedding planning checklist. It tells you everything you need to be doing or booking in the time frame before your wedding. So like 12 months out, 10 months out, six months out, two months out, all of it in chronological order. So whether you are 12 months out or six months out or two months out, you can download this checklist and let me know what step you're in and I will email you all of the details you need to have covered between now and your wedding day. Absolutely free of charge. So if you can't afford a wedding planner or you're drowning in like day-to-day -day checklists and feeling super overwhelmed, be sure to download this checklist and let me know what step you're in and I'll email you all of the videos or all of the content that you need to be consuming to stay on track, stay on time, and equip you as best I can with the knowledge that I have 
to get you successfully ready for your wedding day. Now, the low cost of option above that is the master plan, where I take you through the nine steps from point A to wedding day. Everything that you need to do from beginning to end in chronological order with all of the details, including all of the spreadsheets that you should be using for your budget that calculates out the correct percentages for how much you should spend based on your budget category, uh, including your guest list. And the guest list spreadsheet is set up in such a way that you can export it and upload it into any wedding website that tracks RSVPs for you. The columns are perfectly set up. So all you have to do is export it, I think as a CSV file, upload it to your website and guests can automatically, I don't know why I'm doing this, Guests can automatically RSVP based off of this spreadsheet. We've got email templates for what you need to send to your vendors. We've got how to organize all the last minute details and make sure those that need that information are fully informed. I've got a whole video on how you can run your own rehearsal if you're not working with a coordinator and you don't know how to do that. You need to get into the master plan to get those final steps really honed in. This is really the last step before your wedding day. So if you're watching this any earlier, you could be taking advantage of doing everything correctly up until then. It really does truly reduce your stress when you get help. When you learn how you're supposed to be doing these things and when you're supposed to be doing them, don't pretend that like you know what you're doing. And I don't mean that harshly, but I encourage you to keep seeking out help, keep seeking out advice. And the best part about, about the master plan is the live support. Once a week, we've got a real life wedding planner right now. Currently it's Rebecca. So if you all have been around for a minute, it's Texie Becky who is there every single week for two whole hours waiting to help you. Just jump on into the chat whenever it's live in the master plan and she's there to answer your questions. A real life person, not a bot, it's not canned responses. It's literally a wedding planner there typing responses up to send you to be there to help support you through this. So if you need real life feedback, we are there. In addition to that, I do live monthly phone calls where I jump on, y'all send in your questions and I answer them. So if you can't afford a wedding planner, this is literally the, the next best thing. And that's why in my intro, as I say, I'm your online wedding planner. That's what I'm here to do. But with all of these tips and everything coming together, if it still feels overwhelming and you're like, I don't know, I don't know if I could do this. Like, uh, yes, thank you for providing a roadmap of tactics that I can take to prevent wedding day anxiety. But like, I still need, I think I need more support than I, I think I need more help. I, I think you might need to hire a coordinator. Really and truly, I think it's time to prioritize having someone to run your wedding day. Wedding coordinators are day of insurance. Like literally, we make sure things go as seamlessly as possible. We put out metaphorical and literal fires. If your concern is so heightened that these other suggestions don't seem to be working or lessening your anxiety or preventing your anxiety, you might need to bring in the big guns. And that could either be a wedding planner or a wedding coordinator. A wedding planner helps you plan things out and is there for a long time. A wedding coordinator helps coordinate what you have planned on your own independently. If you're interested in finding a coordinator or a planner in your area, I'm gonna link the list of all of the wedding coordinators and planners that I've personally trained that have gone through my teaching and training methods. So you might not be able to hire me, but you can hire someone who believes in our mantra and carries our mantle and who works really hard in their business and works really hard for their couples because they love what they do. There are a lot of things that you can feel anxious about for your wedding day. I might have, again, unlocked new fears in this video. And if that's the case, I'm so sorry, that was not the intent. But if you take these strategic steps, if you can get to the bottom of this and figure out what is really this anxiety, what's the root cause of this? That might be a session with your therapist or having a conversation with your fiance or your mom or a dear friend being like, I need to unpack this because I'm feeling really anxious and I don't want to feel anxious on my wedding day. Like, ugh. find the root cause. If it's a person, or a group of people, or tension with a person, talk to them. If it's an issue with a vendor, rip off that band-aid. We don't want to hope that things will go successfully on our wedding day. We need to do our best to prevent this before it becomes a bigger issue. Maybe you need to cut the guest list if you don't want that many people around, or you're worried about impressing that many people, or you're worried about having that many eyeballs on you. Maybe you need to find a way to compromise with your fiance on that and see if you can bring that down. If you truly want to prevent wedding day anxiety, you have to have an effective timeline. Remember that one that you write is gonna be nowhere near one that a professional writes. And we will all know if you wrote it yourself and that's okay, you're trying and you're doing your best. But if you would like to have a professional timeline, be sure to check out Perfect Wedding Timeline. I am dead serious. You need something effective for your wedding day. And this is the most fantastic tool that you're gonna be able to find at this price point. But bet. Again, I'm aware that you're here because you're curious and you're trying to learn more, but remember that you don't know everything. Find ways to get additional support and education. It could be these videos, right? There's a ton of them, years of content. It could be our email list where I can be emailing you things that you need to be checking out when you need to be checking them out. Or it could be as detailed as the master plan where it's literally the nine steps that you take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to your ideal wedding day where you can plan easy and stress less because you deserve a stress-free wedding day. 
And that's what the master plan is there for. That's what the wedding planner is there for, the live office hours every single week. We are here to not only guide you, but to respond intentionally and make sure you know exactly where you should be going. And last but not least, if all of this is still feeling really, really angsty, right? You're like, oh, you need to hire a coordinator. I would strongly suggest hiring a coordinator. Um, and of course, I'd be happy to share the list of people that I've trained with you. They're fantastic. If you missed any of the cards, I will have those linked in the description box below if you want to go check those out. You deserve this. You and your fiance deserve to have a fantastic day. You're spending a lot of money. You spent a lot of time planning this. It's arguably one of the best days of your life. Don't leave things to chance. Don't leave a door open for anxiety to creep in or stress to creep in. If you are as proactive as possible, you will be able to prevent a heap ton of wedding day stress and anxiety. That's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. That was a lot to go through. That might feel pretty heavy. I might have poked at some anxieties for you. So if you need to go check out for a little bit and not think about wedding planning and kind of process this later and come back to it, feel free to do that. I'm here for you. I'm happy to support you in these videos, in our free email list, and even more intentionally in the master plan. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit that subscribe button. Oh, and ring the bell specifically so you can see the next video that I do on wedding day anxiety. That'll be super helpful. And stick around for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. And until next week, bye guys. Mm -hmm.